Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to use the topics we learned on the previous video and use it to build a sample admin panel for a blogging application. So the purpose of today's video is to get more practice and also see how we can use the most common, uh, commonly used input groups in Filament. So let's get started, guys. Now, I have gone ahead and already prepared two migrations that we're going to be using for this application. I hope you guys already know how to create models and migrations in Laravel, so I'm not going to be covering that. So the first table we have, or the first model, is a category model. And it has a name and a slug. Super simple. I didn't I don't want to unnecessarily complicate it. And then we have a post model. And on our post, we have a thumbnail. So we will cover how to do image uploads. We have a title. Uh, we have a color. So we're going to show how to use the color picker. We have a slug. We have a category ID. So we're going to show how to add relationships. Now, I will have a separate video for managing relationships. But today, we're going to do a very simple example. Uh, we have a Visivig editor for our content. We have a json for our tags and then we have a boolean editor for our published okay so i will again recap these as we are building it again guys so if it's a bit too much uh, i'll cover them step by step as we're building it but that's basically the migration i have so let's get started and actually build the resource pages for these so i'm going to close my migration files open up the terminal and as always in order to actually create a resource page we're going to be using artisan so type in php artisan make and if you forget the command, command uh, or you don't have access to the internet, just hit enter and uh, Laurel will give you actually the suggestions. But the command is php artisan make filament resource. And then you need to give it your resource name, which is going to be the same as your model name. Okay, so in this case, I have category and post. So I'm going to start off by category first. So I'm going to say category. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for post as well. And now we should have inside our filament folder, a uh, category resource and a post resource. And if I reload the page here, as you guys can see, we have these two. Now it's telling me the table does not exist. So I actually need to go ahead and run my migration. So PHP artisan migrate, nice. And now we should be able to actually see these pages. So because my posts rely on categories, let's go ahead and first build our category resource page, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, open up category resource.php and for our category guys, uh, we have two things, okay? So I'm going to find categories table. So I have it on the right side so you guys can see the columns. So we have a name and a slug and maybe a timestamp. We're not going to be needing that in this case. So for the schema, uh, we can go ahead and first start off by using a text input. This is what we covered on the previous video. Call in make. And then I'm going to say name. I'm also going to say it is required for now. Uh, we will also have a separate video on validation, but for now, just required is the bare minimum we need. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the slug. Now, you can technically make it this so that the, you know, the slug is auto kind of completed as you're typing the name. I'm going to have a separate video on how to do that. It's a little bit more advanced. So for now, this is what we have. And then on the table, we will have kind of the exact same thing we have. Instead of input, it's going to be a column. Okay, so just mirror that. So instead of text input, we will have text column, make, name, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing for slug as well. Okay, now if you would like to show the date, you can do that as well. I don't think it's really necessary, so that's it. And to test it out, uh, I'm going to do a reload. And if I click on new category, as you can see, we get a name. So I'm going to say PHP category, created. Uh, I should have clicked on create more. Let's do one for Laravel and I'm going to click on create and create another and maybe do a live wire. Okay. So let's say we have a blog app. All right. So now we have three categories. Our table looks nice. As you guys can see, we can bulk delete. We can do whatever you like. So now that we have created our categories, I also like to update the icon over here. So let's go ahead and open up hero icons. And so as, as I showed you guys on the previous episode, this is how you actually change the icon. And I'm going to maybe use a folder. Yeah, so we have a folder icon. So in order to update that, we can go ahead and update this navigation icon. And instead of hero icon O, we can say folders. Okay. Sorry, it's without the S. And let's reload and we get the folder for categories. So let's get started and actually create the post page. So on the right side, uh, I'm going to open up the post migration so you guys can see all our columns over here. So I have them over here. And on the left side, I'm going to open up the posts resource. So I'm going to close the categories. 
Now, for our posts, we're going to start off from the top with the easy ones, which is going to be our title. So it's going to be a text input. So let's go ahead and add a text input. And I'm going to call make. So this one is going to be title. And I'm going to just make it super simple and add required for our validation. And next up, we have our color. Now, I did show you guys how to use the color picker on the previous episode. But let's go ahead and see. Just use color picker called make on it. It's very easy to use the color picker. And this is going to be color. And I'm also going to make this one be required. Good. All right. Next thing we need is for the slug. And I'm going to put it under the title. And I'm also going to add that. So next thing, guys, I'm going to cover is how to actually add the content. So this one, there is actually a VZBig editor on Filament. And for these, you don't need to memorize these, by the way, guys. So just go to the Filament website. And if you just go on the form builder, and on the left side, if you scroll down, all the available form inputs are here. Okay, so right now I use uh, text input and color picker. So now, for example, there is a markdown editor. So for our blog post content, we need a markdown editor. I'm just going to go ahead or come over here. You can obviously uh, pick the namespace if you like. I'm using VS Code, so it's automatically importing it for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and basically use this markdown editor. So I'm going to say markdown editor make and then i'm going to say content and that's going to be the content of my blog post good next thing we need is for our tags okay so now luckily for us filament has a tag editor so it's very easy to use i'm going to scroll down find tag input and again i already know the tag input but if it's your first time just come over here and find all the you know maybe there is a radio button maybe you need rich editor, you can go ahead and find these. So I'm going to go ahead and also use the tags input. So under my markdown editor, I'm going to say tags input, make tags. And this one also going to be required. Why not? And the last thing we need, I'm going to do the image upload latest. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at published, which is supposed to be a Boolean. Now for this one, uh, I'm going to see if we can have, we have a checkbox. So we can use the checkbox. We can also use the toggle. It's up to you which one you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use the checkbox over here. So very easy to use. Here I'm going to say uh, check box make. Now for the checkbox, you need to make sure you are importing it from the forms. Okay. Make and I'm going to say published. And this one, I don't think we need required, but why not? Let's add it. And I'm just going to go ahead and reload so we can see our page. And we do have it over here, OK? Now, the layout looks a little bit off. Maybe we can have the content on the left for now. On the next episode, I'm going to show you guys how to create more complex layouts so it will look a bit more pretty. So I think we have everything, if I'm not mistaken. The only thing remaining is category ID and thumbnail. So let's go ahead and add category as well. So for the category, we can actually go ahead and use a select input. So the select is exactly identical to the HTML select, right? So it's going to be a drop, drop down. And it's quite easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and here I'm going to say select, make. Now the name of our column on our database is category ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that category ID. And for the options, what we want is basically uh, the items in our database, right? So I'm going to go ahead and load all the categories we have from our database. Now there is a simple example they have given over here. We can technically go ahead and use this, this exact same example over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So first thing is, uh, if we just use this category ID, so let's go ahead and do options. And I'm going to create a new line. So in order to get all the options, you can go ahead and access your category model. Call all to get all the elements on your database. And then you can use plug, which is a method on the Larva collections, and then for the value, we can just go ahead and do name, which is exactly what I'm using, and then we can do ID. And let's add our comma as well. So that's how you can get all the elements from your database in the select, all right? And again, you can use uh, any kind of code you have. So let's go ahead, do a reload, and see how it looks. Now we have our category ID, we get PHP, Laravel, and Livewire, very nice. Now, here we are seeing category ID. So if this doesn't look very nice, if you want to change this, you can call a method called label on the select and change it to whatever you like. So I'm going to say category. So let's do a reload, and now we get category. So it looks a bit nicer here. 
So now we have created all the columns on our database. The only thing remaining is the file upload. Now for the file upload, I'm going to do it right under our select. So let's add some more spacing so it doesn't look too cramped. And I'm going to close this uh, right window. We don't need it anymore. So for the file uploads, uh, Filament does have a file upload input. And you can again go ahead and under the form builder, if you scroll down, there should be a file upload somewhere around here. Here it is. Now, this section will have all the examples, but I'll show you guys the most common use case you will have. So let's go ahead and call in file upload make. And then you need to give it the column name on your database. So for me, it's thumbnail. thumbnail. Now, by default, this would go ahead and upload the file inside your public disk. Okay, so if you have, for example, S3, you can go ahead and call disk and maybe give it your uh, S3 disk, disk, or if you have any custom disks. By default, it's gonna use public, and I'm just gonna go ahead and also use public over here as well. And if you would like to give it a specific directory, you can also go ahead and call this directory method on it, or chain call it. And for me, I'm gonna go ahead and upload it inside, I don't know, thumbnails, why not? I can't think of a better name. And that's basically how you can do simple file uploads. Now, one thing to keep in mind, Filament does not delete these files when you delete a post. So you do need to handle the file deletion on your own. I will have a separate video on how to do complex file uploads and things like that. But this is going to be a very simple use case you may have. Okay, so that's it, guys. Let's do a quick reload and let's see how it looks. And I think I'm going to go ahead and swap the color picture with the thumbnail so we have a better looking layout. And on the next video, guys, I will show you guys how to actually clean this up. It looks a little bit ugly, ugly right now. And maybe we can also swap the thumbnail and the content. Okay, so we have our title, we have our card picker, and then we also have the ability to upload files. So it looks very good, guys. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new title. Let's say uh, first post. Give it a slug of first post. For the category, I'm going to select PHP. Let's just select a random color and for the content i'm going to go ahead and just type some stuff in so we have something here just to see maybe add a header okay good now for the tags it works exactly how you would expect it i can go ahead and type laurel hit enter and it will create a new tag for me uh, maybe i can say uh, youtube just like that and again for the publish it works just as you would expect it right now i'm going to go ahead and prepare a file to upload over here I have the Laravel logo, so I'm just going to upload it. And you can drag and drop, or you can just click on it and select a file. It's up to you. I'm going to click Published. And if you have done everything correctly, you can you should be able to go ahead and click Create. Now, one thing to keep in mind, guys, is this is kind of a more a Laravel thing, but you do need to make sure you have the fillable property set on your models, okay? So make sure you have this fillable set, or maybe disable it by using Guarded, something like that. But make sure you have this fillable set on your models. This is more Laravel mass assignment than filament, but I thought I'd mention it uh, for those of you who are also new to Laravel. And that's it. So I make sure you have this. So I'm going to click Create. And this has gone ahead and created our post. So if I go on to the post page, you can also go ahead and see. Now, we still haven't created our table. I'll do that in a second. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, one more thing also I should mention, guys, is if you're working with tags, and because it's going to be storing it as a JSON as CSV, make sure you also have this cast on your uh, model as well. So here I have, I'm casting our tags to an array. Just something to keep in mind. And this is also mentioned on the documentation. If you go to the tags input, you don't need to memorize this. Just scroll down. Boom, the code is right over here. You can just go ahead and copy that, add it over here, and make sure your tags are stored or casted to an array. So this makes it just super easy to use. So yeah, just don't memorize these. Just always refer to documentation. Easiest way to go. And over time, you will just naturally memorize them. So let's go ahead and create this posts table over here. So I'm going to open up our posts resource. Now for our table, we're going to have a text column. This is going to be for the name, sorry, the title. Uh, we're going to have another one for slug. Now for our category ID, for now, I'm just going to be leaving it empty. Later on, we'll cover how to do relationships. Next thing we have is going to be our color. So we can go ahead and also look into the documentation, go on table builder, 
and if you scroll down there is indeed a color column so i'm just going to go ahead and select it just like this so let's go ahead and say color column make and this one is going to be color next up is going to be our content we don't really need to show the content for now so for the thumbnail uh filament has an image column and as you guys can see over here so i'm going to be using the image column so just say image column make uh, thumbnail and last but not least we have tags and published so for the tags i'm going to just be using a text column now filament 2 used to have a tags column but they have uh, removed it and it's deprecated on filament 3 and then we also need a checkbox for our published just like this so very easy to create these like if you want to create this manually yourself it's going to take you a very long time to do so let's go ahead and do a quick reload and i have made a mistake here this should be checkbox column not checkbox all yeah all of these have a column at the end so they don't get confused with these so let's go ahead and do a reload and that's it guys so we have our table set up as well and you can also go ahead and check and uncheck the published we can see the tags the title and the slug now we do have one issue and the issue is our image thumbnail image is not actually being shown right as you guys can see now there are two reasons so first thing you need to make sure you are publishing your uh you're linking your storage so you can go ahead and run php artisan uh, storage link if you still haven't done that so that's one thing i have already done it and one more thing you need to be be careful is make sure on your app.env this app url is actually set okay now if you're using laro valet or something like that or maybe uh, you have set up this custom domain for your testing purposes this might work out the box but in my case i'm using php artisan right so i need to go ahead and replace this with this okay so make sure you set your app.url and that should go ahead and hopefully show the image and as you can see we can see the image shown over here very nice and if I go to the post page, we can also go ahead and see this thumbnail. Good. Okay, guys, so I have covered everything. The only thing I kind of uh, skipped was actually creating our, showing our category, right? So let's go ahead and do that. There is a bit more additional steps for showing the category name. Now, if you just want to show the category ID, obviously very easy to do. You can just go ahead and use it like a text column. And maybe I like it after slog. And just say, you know, category id this should get the job done but this doesn't look nice right and it doesn't really give us any useful information so what we would like to do is actually go ahead and show the category name over here okay so let's get started by doing that a first step is we need to actually define this relationship on our model so i'm going to go ahead open up our post model and define a lot of relationship over here so i'm going to say public function category and here you can say this return this dot belongs to category dot class and because i'm using uh, the default you know laravel convention i don't need to actually define the foreign key laravel will just go ahead and do that for us but now that i have done that you actually will have access to a category over here so i can go ahead and say category dot and then access any specific column on that you know model okay so on our categories we have a name and slug so here i can go ahead and say category.name so if i go ahead and i reload over here we get php right as you guys can see very easy so now you do need to make sure that you have this defined so if i go ahead and comment this out and i uh, scroll back we you know we get an empty box so very important that you add your relationship over here and again very easy to use if i wanted to show the slug i can do the exact same thing go ahead and do slug just like this boom easy and that's it good okay guys so that's the basics of creating a simple admin panel okay and we have used the most common uh, input and table types you may want to use now i want, do want to reorder these i want the thumbnail to be all the way to the left so let's go ahead and do that maybe the color as well actually why not and i think that's it so we're good for now and again, if you want to delete something, you just go on edit and click on delete. Now you can add a delete button over here as well if you would like. We will cover that on later episodes, guys. So last thing I want to change, guys, show you guys is how to change the label over here. So for example, we have categories or posts. 
maybe you would like to change this name to a different name. Uh, that's relatively easy to do. So go ahead and select your resource, whichever resource you want to change. And just copy this navigation icon and instead of this navigation icon, change it to model uh, label. And then basically uh, Filmin will go ahead and use this as the default, you know, models tables name. So just save this. If I reload, we get hero icon, you know, some crazy stuff. So let's go ahead and change this with uh, post categories. Okay. I have a typo categories. So this allows you to basically change the name that you have over there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for our uh, category resource as well. And maybe add post. Did I? Yeah. So that's going to be post categories and I need to remove it from here. Okay, good. Let's do reload. Boom. Now it looks fine. I accidentally added it to the post. That's it guys for the basics of, you know, creating a crowd page. Now, I, I tried to cover basically everything you need for majority of the use cases. So probably going to be basically using these. Now, there are some other uh, input types and, you know, uh, columns that you may want to use. But this is probably going to be like 80 to 90% of the time. These are the things you're going to be using, especially if you have a simple application. Now, we do have some issues. I don't like the layout, especially this publish button looks very ugly right now. I don't like how it looks. So on the next video, guys, I'm going to show you how to create more complex layouts, create grids, have separate sections and divide your kind of create pages into very beautiful looking pages that looks professional. And also it's easier on the eyes right now. I just personally don't like it. But that's going to be for the next video, guys. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below, guys. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel so you get notified of the latest videos. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.